It's no secret that Canva is one of my absolute favorite graphic design tools because it's extremely user intuitive and just plain fun to use. But I also love Canva because the team there is constantly releasing new features for us to level up our designs. In today's video, I'm sharing eight new Canva tools that I recently discovered that I know you're gonna find super helpful whether you're using Canva to create digital products to sell, print on demand products, designs for social media, or just for your own personal projects. And I'm saving my absolute favorite update for last. So make sure you stick around and watch all the way to the end of the video to see what it is. All right, let's dive into this first new tool, which is called the background generator. All right, so with the new background generator, you can use AI to replace the background of a photo and tell it what background you want it to put there instead. So we're here in the Canva editor. I've gone ahead and added a photo to my project. So what you're gonna do here is when you have your photo that you wanna work on added, you're gonna select it and then come up to this floating toolbar where it says edit. And once you click on edit, you come over to the left where it says Magic Studio and underneath this section, you'll now see the one that says Background Generator. Now you'll see right now, it has a little purple icon that says new and it also has a little crown symbol, which tells us this is a Canva Pro only tool. So you will have to have the Canva Pro plan. You won't be able to access this if you're just on the Canva free plan. And if you don't have Canva Pro yet, but you'd like to try it, I've got a link in the description that'll give you a free 30 day trial. So you can feel free to use that affiliate link. That'll give you 30 days for free trying out Canva Pro to see if you like these upgraded features and tools. And once you have Canva Pro, you'll be able to click on this background generator. And this will bring you to a box where you can type in what the new background should look like. So for this one, I'm going to say kitchen counter with window behind and rain showing through the window. Then I'm going to click generate and Canva is going to use AI to generate this. And we can see the four different options it's given me here on the left. So I have slightly different variations I can choose from. I can click on these and see what they look like. And then the one that I like the best, I can stick with in my project and continue to work with it there. I've really enjoyed experimenting with this new background generator. And every time I've used it so far, I've been impressed with the quality of the backgrounds that it's given and how natural it makes it look with this subject of my photo. All right, we're about to move on to tool number two, which is a really fun one. But first I wanna let you know, if you are interested in selling digital products online and specifically using Canva to create and sell digital products, whether you wanna do it for a side hustle or to make a full-time income, I've got a deep dive masterclass. It's gonna be super helpful for you. It's totally free, free to watch. I have it linked in the description box below. It's my digital product pack powerhouse masterclass. It's about 45 minutes long and it goes through the crucial four steps that you'll need to take when starting and growing your digital products business. These are the four steps I wish someone had laid out clearly for me when I first started to sell digital products. So I want to give this to you just as a free gift to help you see those sales start rolling in sooner and reach the success that you dream of in your digital product business. So again, that's linked in the description box below. Feel free to hop over and watch that on demand right when you get done watching this video. All right, feature number two is perspective correction. So this is going to happen in the modal photo editor, not inside the main Canva editor. So what I mean by that is when you come to your Canva homepage, you'll click to create a design. And instead of actually creating a new project design, you'll come all the way down here on the left to where it says upload. And this is where you're going to choose a photo that you want to upload to edit the perspective on. So here I've got this photo of a church building I'm going to work with. And instead of clicking this use in a new design, I'm going to select edit image. This will bring up the modal photo editor. This is where I can do several different things to just edit this photo right here as opposed to bringing it into a whole new project. So for the perspective correction feature, I'm going to come over inside this editor to where it says crop and you'll see where it says perspective on the left underneath that. And here we have slider bars for both vertical perspective and horizontal perspective. So if I take this vertical slider bar to the right, you'll see how the top starts to change into a different vertical perspective. I can also take it to the left to have that happen to the bottom of the photo and bring it out. Or I can do this with the horizontal horizontal slider by bringing it out to the right or out to the left. So that's what it looks like with an actual photo, but I might also find this useful for working with graphics. So here I brought in a little graphic that I saved. I'm going to work with this again, click edit image crop and use these perspective sliders to edit this how I want. Then I can click done and choose to either bring this into a new design or save it as is. All right, moving on to our next feature, which is magic media style reference. So to use this one, when I'm inside my editor, I'm going to come over to the app section and search for the app that's titled magic media. This one is it right here. So I'm going to click on that. And magic media is not a new tool. This is the one that we've used for a while now inside of Canva to use AI to generate images, graphics, and videos. But what's different here is the style reference option. So magic media looks pretty much the same. You'll just enter your prompt here to describe what you want the AI to create for you. So for this example, I'm going to put in dog wearing sunglasses. Maybe I want to create something fun with this design. 
design, like a wall art print. So I've got my prompt in there, but I'm gonna come to styles. And this is where you can select what style you want from their preset style options. But you can use the new tool, which is where it says upload reference image. This is gonna allow you to choose your own file to upload. And the tool then knows how to extract the stylistic elements from your uploaded image and apply them to the newly generated image. So I'm just gonna click upload files, choose the image I want it to use as the reference. I found this cute one of a cat wearing sunglasses and sort of a fun, vibrant color pop art style. So I'm gonna select that and click generate images. And here are the four images that it generated for me of the dog wearing sunglasses in a similar style. So I can look at these in my project and add the one I like. And this feature just allows me to generate more personal and customized images according to what I'm actually envisioning without having to worry about depending solely on the text prompt to describe what I'm wanting. Now, like I mentioned before, if you're someone who's wanting to sell digital products online to make money, but maybe you're just starting out and don't really know where to begin, I have one more freebie for you that I think is gonna be super helpful for you. And this is my entire set of Canva digital product templates. So you can use the templates that me and my team have created ourselves to create your own digital products to sell online. And with this set, you get several different types of digital products. So you can use these templates, tweak them and alter them a little bit to make them your own and then use those to sell as your own digital products in your own shop. I'm a big fan of shortcutting the process and not having to start from scratch when I don't have to. That's why I love using tools and templates like this. And again, this is something I wish I had had when I first started. So that's why I want to offer it to you to give you a little bit of a jump start as you're getting going with your digital products business. So if you want to grab that free set of templates, I've got the link for that in the description box below as well. Okay. Tool number four we're going to talk about is custom mock-up templates. Many of us as product sellers are using all different types of mockups, which are just images that we can put our designs into to give our potential customers an idea of what that product would look like or appear like as a tangible item. You can find mockups a lot of times in the Canva element library or even on a third party website like Creative Market or Creative Fabrica, but sometimes you just can't find exactly the right photo that looks like what you want for your mockup. So this new tool inside of Canva allows us to take a photo that's not already a mockup and turn it into our own mockup template. So for instance, I've got this photo of a computer, but this is not a mock-up yet. It doesn't have a frame in it that I can drag my design into. It's just simply a photo that was taken of a laptop, but I'm going to use this by putting it in my project and then coming over to the apps section. I'm going to look for the mock-ups app. This is it right here. And you'll see the new feature here at the very top under custom where it says creative mock-up template. When I select my photo in the project, I'll be able to then choose this option and it automatically uses AI to change this photo into an actual mock-up with a Canva frame that I can then drag my own design into. So I can see the options here on the left with the new frame added. You can see a couple of these are a little bit wonky. I think they're still improving this as this is a brand new feature and I'm sure this is going to get better and better and more accurate. So some of these may not be quite right, but these top two to me look like they could work. So when I have selected the one I want, I'm going to click confirm and that's going to actually change my photo in the editor into this mock-up. So there's my laptop with the new Canva frame. So now what I can do if you're not familiar with Canva frames is you can drag an image or a photo into this frame to fit it right in. So it looks like it's part of the laptop. So I might want to use this in some of my marketing, maybe for one of my courses. So I'm going to drag in one of my images that I created for my simplified marketing blueprint course. I'm simply going to drag this to hover over the frame and release. And then that's going to automatically put that image right here in the laptop. So it appears as if it's actually showing on the laptop screen. I love the idea of this tool because it's so fun to be able to really turn any picture that you have into a mock-up in just a few seconds. Okay, moving right along to tool number five, which is line text direction and width. So in Canva, you can add a line to your project with the keyboard shortcut L. So I'm just gonna tap L on my keyboard. That adds a line that I can then work with by lengthening, moving around. But if you wanna add text in the middle of your line, you can double click on it and that automatically adds a text box. So this text box is not a new feature, but what is new is being able to alter both the width and direction of this text. So let's say I bring the end of this line up diagonally, the text is going to move with it. But if I didn't want my text going diagonally and I wanted just the line going diagonally, I can keep this text box selected. And then up here on the top floating bar menu, there's this new text direction button. So if I click this, it automatically makes my text horizontal again while keeping that line vertical. So I could type in anything I want here and it's going to stay going straight across in the middle of that line. Another thing that we can now change with text in a line is the width of the text box. So here I can just simply click the side and drag it to the left or right to increase or decrease the amount of space that's in that text box. 
else. If I wanted to make this larger, I can make it look something like this, or I could make it look as small as I want around the text. Okay, we've got three tools left, and these are all gonna be in the apps section of Canva. They're new apps that I found that I absolutely love and have really enjoyed experimenting with. But before we talk about the first one of those, if you're finding value in this video and you're finding it helpful, I would be super grateful if you'd give the video a like by clicking that thumbs up button below, and also consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button. That'll make sure that you don't ever miss one of our new weekly videos. All right, the next tool we're talking about is called the Image Splitter app. So this is an app in Canva that allows us to divide one photo into equal sections so we can create an effect sort of like this. This might be something that I could sell as a digital wall art print, but there are a lot of different ways we can use this app, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So to start with this, again, we're gonna come to the left where it says apps and search for image splitter. So this is what the image splitter icon looks like. We click on that and when we come in, we can select choose file. I'm gonna use our pretty picture of the church that we already used earlier. And then we can come down to where it says number of rows and number of columns. We can use this slide bar to increase or decrease the number of rows and columns that it's gonna be divided up into. So for this one, the way I have it up here, I selected four columns for this, but you can do whatever you want depending on what you want this to look like. When you've got that set, you're gonna click split image, and then it's going to give you the different sections of your image, which you can then click to add to your design or set as the background. To create this effect, I simply added each of them to the design and then made sure they were equally spaced apart and altered the height of each. Now you can also use this to create a really beautiful Instagram grid. I'm gonna click choose file again. And let's say I wanted to use a mock-up I created for my simplified marketing blueprint course. This is the image I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna choose that I want this to have three rows and three columns. So this is equally splitting it up three ways across and three ways going down. I'm gonna click split image. And here you can see each of my different sections of the image, which I can then add to the design and move around to work with how I want. Or if I'm using this for Instagram and I want each of these sections to be a different post. I can size these up how I want them, duplicate my page, and click to add a different post to each page of the design. And then I could go up in the corner here where it says share and download these each as a separate file to use each as their own post on Instagram. All right, next up is the Frame Blur app. So with this app again, I'm gonna start with an image that I wanna work with. I'm gonna come over to the app section and this one is called Frame Blur. So you should be able to find that when you type that into the search bar. I'm gonna choose this app Frame Blur and this is going to allow me to add shapes and text as a blur on top of an image. So if I've already got an image in my project that I want to use for this, I'm gonna select that, then click Edit Image and that'll bring up my options here on the left. I can use the brush option, the shape option or the text option. So brush is just sort of like a freehand doodling tool that I can use to add blur on top of this. I can change my brush size. If I wanted to make it larger, I could do that. I can change a lot of things like the fade, the effect. So let's say I want this to be a colored blur. I'm gonna choose the color that I want. For now, I'm just gonna choose this dark purple color and I can even edit the transparency. So here I'm gonna use my cursor on top of my image to just click and draw whatever shape I want. You can see how it adds it as a colored blur on top of this. Now I can always go back and click to a different effect if I want to change it. So that's the Gaussian effect. And I can even click remove if I want to start over. Now let's click over to shape. This is a fun one where I can do the same thing, but instead of freehanding it, I can add a shape that's already here for me. So I could do a circle, triangle, hexagon, star. Let's go with this star for now. And then I can size this up to whatever size I want and move it around on top of my design. Again, changing things like the intensity and the blur effect. There's fun effects in here like a motion effect or a zoom effect. And I can even add text as well. So if I click over to text, I can change what this says. So I might say, you're awesome. I can change the font if I want to here. Again, set all my settings, select my blur effect that I want and click add text blur. And that's going to add it to my image here for me to continue working with. Again, I can always change the intensity of the color and the blur effect. And when I'm happy with the way this looks, I'll click save. All right, this next app we're about to talk about is my absolute favorite out of the ones I've recently found. I am so excited for this, especially for us digital product sellers and those creating designs on Canva, because this is going to allow us to add fun textures to images and graphics that didn't have a texture applied before. So with this, if you hadn't guessed it yet, we're using the texture app. Again, we're going to start with an image in our project and then we're gonna to come to the app section, look for texture, and this is the one we're selecting. It just says texture. And this is gonna give us all different kinds of texture effects that we can add on top of this photo. So we've got textures that 
that look like paper, paint, VHS, grit, film grain, light, fabric, and grunge. So when you find the one you want to try, you're just going to select it from here and it's going to automatically apply it as an overlay on top of your photo or your image. So you can see how now my photo of these cute little oranges has a paper effect. It looks almost like a piece of paper that was folded up for a while. And I can then continue to edit with this effect by changing the scale of it, adding rotation, decreasing or increasing the opacity so it's more or less apparent, and even changing the blend mode. Right now it's on overlay, but I can change it. There's a lot of different options here for things I can do to make it have different appearances. Now, if I want to try a different effect, I can just click the back button. That'll take it off. And I might try something different like brush strokes. This is a little more subtle, but if you look closely, this makes it look almost like a painting. Like this pattern has been painted on. You can see little brush strokes in there. If I click on paint and click see all, they've got a lot of different choices here. So I might want brush strokes, but I can choose from dark swirls to a different brush strokes, to ink splatter, to silky waves. They've got so many different options here. So if I choose something like this ink splatter, this is pretty dark. I'm just going to come over and use this opacity slider to bring it down, keep the effect, but alter it to where it's a little more subtle. Again, this is one of my favorite new apps to play around with because I just love adding textures. I think designs with texture on them a lot of times grab more attention than those without. So especially things like these grunge textures, this is a woven linen texture. I really like this one that says grunge surface. Again, this just applies some really interesting effects to make it look a little bit vintage and worn. So you can look through these and decide what textures might work best for what specific effect you're going for. So I highly encourage you to just jump on Canva, look through some of these new features, play around with them, experiment, and see how you might be able to use some or all of these in your designs. Also, don't forget to click the links in the description box below to hop over and watch my free 45 minute digital product powerhouse masterclass and to grab your free bundle of Canva digital product templates. Remember, there's also a link down there for your Canva free 30 day pro trial if you're interested in trying out Canva Pro to access some of these premium features. And I can't wait to see what you come up with in your designing. Talk soon, friend. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know.